A ver. Alright. Most everybody looks like they haven't pulled up. Except for Gay Davery. Do I have everybody here? I think I'm missing somebody. Who am I missing? Manuel, Zach, Kevin, Jay, Gay, David, and Andrew. I'm missing somebody. I'm not sure who. Alright. So last class we got the um the game to pretty much uh, start working. We got, hopefully everybody's on the same page. I know Jaden, Jaden's missing, that's who's missing. Um, yeah, apparently everybody's having bad internet connections today. Uh, Gabe is, and somebody else told me they were too. Who was that, Jay? Yeah, Jay. All right, so Jay and Gabe are having bad internet connections. All right. You see anybody else having issues with the internet today? David? Wow, okay. Avery's apparently having bad internet connections. Okay, well, apparently, I think Avery messed the internet up. I think that's, a, that's what's happening. <laughs> All right. Um... All right, cool. And I, my heart bleeds for you there, Gabe. I'm, I'm sorry that your one one versus one Call of Duty thing didn't couldn't work out. I'm, I'm so my I'm really in tears over here. All right, um, let's continue. <laughs> let's continue. So we got the game working. We got the laser shooting, the spaceship moving, and the alien interacting with the laser. Now I do want to add on to another concept that I was hesitant about going to last time. And that's the concept of what's called a list or an array. So go to your data thing and we're going to make what's called a list. So here I'm going to hit the, make, uh, the name of uh, uh, make a list and we're going to call it an array. All right. Reason The reason I'm calling it an array is because in most languages, this concept is an array. So um, here they call it a list. In most other languages, it's called an array. And hopefully some weird thing pops up like this. So what an array is, so we kind of talked about score, how it was a data type. Well, an array is a data type too, but it allows you to store multiple Mult, not multiple types of data, multiple data of the same type. So let me kind of show you what I'm talking about there. So here is an old Java program I was working on. And this gives a very good example. Here I have two different arrays. All right. Um, here I have an array called strings, which is a sentence, right, or a string of characters. And here I can have multiple different characters. This is just a... Uh, Morse code translating pro program. It translates from Morse code to English and English to Morse code. So here I have, you can see I have two symbols. I have a, a few different characters there and stuff like that. And up here, this is my char array or character array. Uh, people call, people say this word differently. Uh, the char, I say it char. Some people say car, um, car array, but I usually just call it the char. And a charge is a letter, one character. Uh, and that's all this stuff here. So I'm listing all of these as one individual entity. And what that allows me to do is uh, do stuff like this here, which allows me to sort through this array to find different attributes of it and replace them out um, and stuff like that. All right, we'll work more with this with Arduino. I just wanted you to see it in another language. So this is how it looks in an actual language. And how you can always denote or tell is usually these um, these two little square brackets here. 
in most languages, if you see this, you can probably automatically assume it's some type of array. All right, so here we're going to make this list, and you can add to it by different ways here. And what this array, we're going to make this array do. This can be a, an array, of, a string array, in which the aliens is going to say when he hit, gets hit by the laser. All right. So making it instead of saying just one thing, we can make it say multiple different things. So, and you can do it one of two ways. There's a add thing to array. So here I can put this here. I'm going to put a few of these here. Add thing to array. And here I'm just going to say, ouch. Well, I can spell the night. Ouch. You got me something like that. You can add whatever you want to it. Um, what else do I want to say? No, oh, come on. All right. And you can also add it by clicking this little plus. And so when you added the array or the list, you got a little menu that popped up on your on your uh, game menu. All right, and there, once you start adding it, we'll, we'll, we'll put it on the alien. Right now, it's right now it's not going to matter where we put it. Actually, I think I am on the alien. Yeah, it's not going to matter. I'll show you why. Because I'm making it a global because it's in one click. But good call. Um, I can also add, add another variable to it here or add another something here. So here I got thing. I already got that. Uh, good heavens, something like that. All right. And I don't want this here. I want it to be here, but I don't want it to be shown, so I am going to hide it. So when click hide array. So there we go. Now it's hidden. So now. Go to the alien. It does not matter where you added the array as long as it was under a when clicked, uh, when green flag clicked icon. So it's not going to particularly matter too much. Um, ignore this for right now. We'll get back to what I did there. Pretty simple, but oops. And let me put this up. Oh, I got break apart here. So here I've changed my code up a little bit from I think the way I had it last time. I think I had weight here. So now we're going to actually go in to start making it the inner, the laser. When the la laser hits the alien, he'll actually uh, die. So in your alien code where you have the if touching laser change score by one, put a hide in there too. So after he gets hit by the alien, he should disappear. But we're also going to make him say something too. So we're going to go to, was it looks? Yeah. So go to looks and underneath your right at when touching laser, then put say hello, right? But we're going to change it. We're going to make it say something else. Instead of saying hello, we are going to they make it say array. So if not the entire array, that'd be gay. Don't do that. Uh, where is it? Ah, there it is. So if I put this here, every time it gets hit by the alien, it'll say everything that I put into the array. So let's actually I can go ahead and do that because that sounds fun. Oops, I got some code in there. One, say array. He didn't call oh, because I didn't tell the weight. Uh, looks. Say. Low. Add in there. 
Let's see if that works. And there he goes. Hopefully, uh, hopefully y'all saw that. Let's see some of y'all that are on my screen. All right, come to my screen if you're not on my screen. Actually, I do want to demonstrate what I just did there. And raise your hands when you have your list created too. Go ahead and raise your hands if you have your list created. <laughs> that's fine if you copy me or you put in your own stuff that's fine I don't it's not going to be uh... oh alright alright so here here comes a good uh, a good example because you're going to um, when you when and if you actually take a computer programming class you're going to need to understand this um, so here I'm going to hit play I'm going to hit one now the way I have my code structured now it says, if touching lasers, stay array for two seconds. So when it hits and it says, see, it says the entire array over and over again for two seconds. All right, because we, um, we didn't give it a specific element of an array. All right, so that's why I'm going to change that. I'm going to go here to data. I'm going to get rid of the say array command. And instead of saying the entire array, I am going to, not that one. Item one of array, and instead of saying one, I'm going to put something else in there because let's see what I had an array of five. Place it, no, not that. Operators pick a random here, and I think I had five or four four there we go for one second hopefully all this works I did a slightly different last class so uh, let's see so I'm gonna hit play I hit one when I shoot there we go it's perfect so now every time this alien gets here he's gonna say one element of that array and it's gonna pick a random between one to four if I said item one, he'll keep saying uh, whatever I said first, good humans, or or whatever el whatever number you have is the number in which he's going to say. So if I said one first, or just say item one, he's just going to say ouch over and over and over again. If I said two, he'll say good heavens, or whatever I put for item element number two. All right, does that make sense? Everybody kind of tracking? All right, now let's raise your hands when you have that done, and then we'll get on to making the alien uh, move. Let me know if I need to cover anything, recover anything there. I, I'll kind of talk, I think I talked a little bit too fast right there. Cause it's not entirely random, Gabe. So he might be saying different things, but uh, if you add more elements of the array, he'll probably say something different. Cause remember, random's not really random. It might be picking the same number over and over again, especially when you only have one to four. Yeah, so if you got one through four, he's going to be saying, there's a good chance he's going to say the same thing twice, quite a few times. So let me get rid of some of this stuff here. Everybody got the array and all that stuff set. You 
probably didn't hide it, uh, Gabe. So here I have one click hide for my laser. I also put my array in there for some random reason. Yeah, also hit my list too. Hide and then I put hide list too. There's two hides there. Avery, how you going, sir? You got it? Which part do you need? The this one or laser? Or alien? Is it specific order? What do you mean, is it specific order, Gabe? Like, uh, when it says when flag clicked, and then it says hide, and then uh, all the add rays, and you have to put hide list at the bottom, is it specific? It, it doesn't matter. It wouldn't matter here. I can put it up here, too. All right. Yeah, yeah that, that wouldn't matter. As long as it's hiding and not deleting, it wouldn't matter. But it's not saying it. Whoops. All right, Avery, my first thing is going to make sure that you're on the um, only alien when you put this. And say, if touching laser, blah, blah, blah. What's going on with yours, Avery? Uh, I got everything. It's just not saying it. I think I figured it out. I had um, just say it. I didn't have to say it for one second. That might be it. Yeah, you probably said it. Just said it so quick that you didn't see it. That's probably it. All right. So now let's get the alien to move. Now, if I remember right now, I think I've changed these things up here a little bit. But here where I'm writing all my code... I think all of your codes, from what I remember, is you have right here where I have when I receive easy, you probably have this, when backdrop switches to stars. So if you do have that, I want you to switch this here because remember when we're here on the backdrop, we broadcast easy or hard depending on what the user selects. So back on Alien, I'm writing the position, the first position code, or the first uh, what word am I looking for? The first one underneath easy. So when I receive easy, everything should be underneath this. So if you have a show backdrop to stars here, you can just click and move it out of the way. And it doesn't matter. You can keep it there and not keep it there. It does not, as far as I can tell, it does not matter. Um, but right now I do want this to be, everything here be under when I receive easy. Okay, some of y'all noticed I already did it. Some of y'all already went ahead and did it. Okay. Which is fine. We can. And if I have time, I do want to try something I've never tried before. So we're going to see. I'm going to try to make them duplicate every time they get hit. I don't know how that's going to work, but we're going to try it. But first, I got to get your, get your all's aliens moving. All right. So when I receive easy show, and you probably don't have this command here, this go to, uh, go to zero one oh nine, right? And for right now, go ahead and grab that command, put it right underneath show, go to your motion that's in there, 
and I do want yours to be equal to mine. So go to 0, 109. X of 0, Y of 109. <laughs> Yeah, I probably will break it. Depends on how much time we have. Put hands down. All right. All right. So raise your hands when you're all when you're all tracking on the same page here. So I'll know. And Jay, I got your second email. I just haven't had a chance to reply to it yet. I do have a few books for you, but I have to look them up. Got yeah, one that's really good. I just got have to. I got it here at my house. I gotta find it again. It really helped me understand the concepts and stuff. Jay was asking me about books about electrical engineering. Apparently, apparently Jay's a line man, which is a pretty sweet job, dude. It's hard work, but it's a uh, Good job. <laughs> and now Gabe thinks you're a part of the Illuminati, Jay. All right, raise your hands when your code looks like mine, minus all this stuff. Even if you put it there, that's fine. But right this part here, this, we just have this stuff here. All right, cool. All right, so here we're going to start getting it to move, and we're going to get it to uh, change behavior based off easy and hard, but we're going to do that as part last. So we're going to stay on the easy side, and then we'll switch over to the hard side. So to do this, there's several, again, when encoding, there's several different ways of doing the exact same thing. So if you do not have a, so you should have a variable of score, excuse me, <clears throat> score, and I want you to create two more variables of speed and direction, of speed and direction, and we move this out of the way, and I'm going to put both of these right there. And your first one should be, now this one is specific, you should have set speed to 2 at the beginning and then set direction to blank, even though most of y'all probably already know I'm going to put speed right there. All right, so go ahead and get that set up. <laughs> Some, yeah, I noticed that. Like every time this game gets created, speed and direction is like already created. I think there's some command for space that it, it automatically creates those two variables. I don't know why. All right. So here we're setting a speed to two, and we are going to, I'm going to set direction to speed. Which I think that's a little bit redundant the way it's going to be set up. It is. But it gives you a way, I like it for two reasons. One, lets you use two different variables, and we're setting one equal to each other. So the second variable is actually dependent on the first variable, which is a big thing in computer programming. Like, that, that happens a lot, especially when you're doing robotic stuff and all that uh, cool things. So here, let me break some of these things down, because I've already have them set up. So... We have it speed, set speed to zero, set direction to speed. And now inside of the forever loop, we are going to put in a few more if statements. I'm only going to drop one in here. Um, one in here right off the bat. Actually, no, I'm going to put these over here. I lied. Whoops, I'm sorry. Hang on. So here, I'm going to actually just leave these over here. All right. So, in these if statements, we've only been dealing with <laughs> we've only been dealing with one uh, one condition for it to be true. However, 
you can make an if statement to have multiple different uh, multiple different conditions. All right, and here, this is what I want y'all to be creating right here. Th this one, let me highlight it for you. This right here is what I want y'all to be doing. All right, but in the if statement, you can actually have multiple different conditions. And to give a, an example here, I'm going to just put that over there for right now. So in your operators block. You actually have these a few different things and or not. So I can actually make a if statement something like this. And everything I'm doing here is perfectly valid. So maybe I want a if statement to only execute um, if my sensor's in a correct location and if the temperature is 30 degrees and my killer robot doesn't have any blood on its claws and um, the Terminator is in sight and Iron Man is coming for backup then it's going to execute whatever command I put in here. <laughs> Alright, so that those are perfectly valid things that are actually done. And, or is either so or so this statement's happened or this statement happened or that statement happened all right and we'll, I'll show you what they look like in other languages it's not as simple as and or or but it's still pretty simple it's just a little bit different way of looking at it but here I'm just saying that if if it, if the alien is greater than 200 then do something else Why did I have that there? Okay. And here I'm using speed to, um, I'm using, uh, speed is my, my constraint. How I'm going to control how fast or slow it goes. All right. And with this here, this, here I'm just going to simple multiplication. I'm saying times negative one. So essentially, if this is set direction to speed times negative one, you can hopefully see that I'm going to pretty much just shift it over. I'm going to make it go the opposite way. All right, because you know any number times one is itself, and any number times negative one is negative one, or negative of itself. And then we just simply take this, slide this in the if statement, but outside of that if loop that you have in there. Drop that in. Oh, yeah, and the change y by negative 20, that's just dropping it down. So I'm shifting it over to the right. I'm dropping it down, and then I'm shifting it to the left. I'm going to play make sure everything's working right. And my alien is just staying in there. Why is he just staying there? Because I don't have move X by change X by. So I am going to put that there. <laughs> change X by speed or wait. Change X by direction. Think. Let's try. I think that's how I do it. It's going. He's dropping. There it goes. Now I got it. And hopefully he'll drop down again. Drawings. Let's see if I can hit this guy. Oops. Ah. Wow, I can't even. There it goes. Cool. Raise your hands when you have all that. I know that was a lot right there. I lost Manuel. Manuel, did I lose your brother? Where'd you go? You 
still with me, Manuel? Okay. It said you went offline for a second. All right. Again, raise your hands when you have all this here. Alien just drops to the bottom of the screen and doesn't move. Make sure that these if statements, uh, Andrew or Jay, these two if statements look exactly like mine, even with the same numbers, 200, negative 200, negative 20, negative 20, all this stuff. And make sure it's not in this if statement. It should be outside of this if statement. Yeah, okay, apparently some of y'all are having the same issue. Apparently the alien is dropping to the bottom of the screen. Oh, maybe this here, this might be what you're missing here. Just change X by, change X by direction should be first, your if statement for the laser second, and then your other two if statements should be below everything there. Negative one. And that number in the, in the multiplication box here is negative one. And your alien should be doing that. If it's not moving at all, you're probably missing this command right here. This change X by direction. <laughs> Make sure it's not in any if statement. It should be just out. This statement here should be outside of all if statements. Nope, not below the forever. It's still in the forever loop. Yes, it is right below the word forever. Correct. All right. Jay says he's still dropping. Dropping. So you got that there. Why would you be dropping? Um, so, I mean, where are you, Jay? There you are. So, Jay, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. So, it sounds to me like you're saying that, like, when you start the game, your alien just drops, like, on top of your spaceship, pretty much? Yeah, yeah. I can just barely see it in the screen. Wow, you're, yeah, you're staticky. I can hear you over here. Um, I, this is, you just have 20s. Why would it be dropping? Unless you have changed Y by direction here. Make sure that this has changed X and not Y. Nope, it's changed X. Um, Jay, hit the uh, share project and then send me the link. Let me see what you got. I only see two hands up right now. Is, is everybody else having some type of issue? Okay, three hands. Okay. Do the same thing, Gabe. Share your project. Send me the link. 
Manuel, you too. Andrew, you too if you're having issues. OG. All right. So you got set speed to two, set direction to direction. There's your problem, Mr. Gabe. Uh, right in the top right corner, Andrew, there's a button that says share. Hit that. So right here, change this to speed, uh, Gabe, and I think you'll be good to go. Who else has shared? Okay, and then send me the uh, send me the link. Uh, whoever just asked me something. Who was it? I got a bunch of stuff here. Being broke is in game stuff. Yeah, I know what broke OG meant there, genius. My alien does the. Okay, here's Andrews. Let me look at Andrews. Uh, Jay, check that with yours, too. For your set direction, make sure it says set direction to speed, not set direction to direction. Socrates, 99, I like that one. All right. Speed, negative one, negative twenty. Got it at one oh nine. No, it's not supposed to move up. You can make it move up, but I haven't we haven't coded for that yet. Um whose code do I have here? Socrates, not Andrews. Set score to zero. Hide. So that works. Let's see what I'm going to put that in there. All right. That one works. This one should mess up. Yep. Okay, stop. Is that doing that? As soon as I put this in there, it does that.
Okay. Oh. I don't know if it's okay with you, but I just changed it where it was playing the game and I killed the spaceship. Awesome. Yep, it's a, is your alien supposed to move up? Um, what is going on here? I think there is some conspiracy voodoo going on here or something. Greater. Oh, that's why. Okay, you got two greater than statements here, Socrates, Andrew. So you take this one out. Uh, Jay, you probably did the same thing. And this one should be a less than. So here, here, make this 200. Put this back there, this back there, and let's see if that works. Oh, now it just goes the other way. Oh, wait, this one should be here. Here? What? Alright, what did y'all do? Don't kill me. Alright, 0, 109, change X by direction. Change X by direction, touching laser, say blah blah blah. So if, if X position is greater than 200, multiply by negative 1. If X Direction is greater than 200 multiplied by negative 1. If, if less than 200, negative 200. If less than negative 200. Work. There it is. All right. You just had the things out of order. Who is Socrates again? Andrew, is that you? Okay. There you go. Andrew, or not Andrew, Jay, you probably did the same thing. Make Check your greater than and less than signs. Yeah, that's what it was. All right, cool. So everybody got that now? So I need, yes, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah, the thing is, raise your hand if you have yours working correctly now. Like the alien goes left and right, drops down, all that fun stuff. Jay Manuel. Jay. All right, then, if, so you're saying it goes all the way over here and then it drops all the way down, Jay? So you got this part working right, so which part is that? Is that 
Let's find out which part that is. I think that's this one. Let's find out. Yep. So this statement you have correct. It then it drops all the way down. So that's telling me that this one's not correct. So if something about this one is not like mine, whether it's speed times negative one or x position or change y by or something like that. I'm trying to get there, Zach. All right. To make it hard to go to to get the the hard option, that's actually relatively easy. You just right click, duplicate. Bring that over there, change this to hard, and instead of set speed to 2, we'll say set speed to 5. And then it should be going really fast. There we go. So I'm going to put hands down, raise your hands when you got all that. All right, I got eight minutes here. So, So here's the, <coughs> the cool part to be able to uh, to make multiple aliens. You can just right click. Watch on this reset my game. All right, we'll right click and just duplicate them. Right click, duplicate. I make three. Every alien should have the exact same code, right? But they're all going to be on top of each other right now because the way we have it set up. So the way to fix that is at your go to command, which is why I was being specific here. Here we're saying go to zero and this and I'm on my second alien. All right, so I'm just gonna shift this guy negative ten to the right or left, I'm sorry. So he should be shifted to the left. And then my third alien, I'm gonna shift him to the right by just putting in ten for the third alien. For the go to ten and then go to ten. And then when I press play, I should have three aliens. Nope, I do have two something aliens, but my something's not right. Ah, I didn't put negative 10 here. And I think it's negative, let's try negative 20. And I think it, whoops. And 20. Play. One, okay, getting there. It's not quite there, so negative 30. 30. Oh, I didn't change this guy. That's what I didn't do. So negative 30 and 30. Let's do negative 60 and 60. Let's see what happens. Play one, there it is. It so it increments of 30. And now I have three aliens moving across my screen. Or you can add eight, or you can add 20. I don't care how many you add, just every alien is going to have to be an increment offset of 10 in either direction, or 30. All right, raise your hands when y'all have that. Fifty if you're using the spaceship. Apparently, Gabe's game is the aliens are shooting the spaceship, as God intended. So. 
So if you're having problems, let me know. Let me know what the issues are. Let me try to help y'all out here. We got five more minutes here. I don't want. I want everybody to be able to say they've made some type of video game this week. Yes, yes, you can make more or less if you want. I don't. Yes, you can make as many aliens as you want to. And you can put in a code that says if the aliens hit the spaceship, you know, I don't know, maybe a game over screen. Well, what I was thinking is here, I'm, I'm just kind of spitballing ideas here how to change this thing up. You go to looks, I think. Nope, it's not looks. Control. Yeah. So you can actually create a clones here. So like in the laser statement, maybe, I don't know, create a clone of myself. So after he gets killed, he'll create, let's try this. I'm just going to slap that in there. Where I'm at. Easy. Let's see what happens here. He got hit by a laser. He created a clone of himself. Of alien. Let's try that. And. Ah! Creates a clone of himself. I hide him. Let's do looks. Show. Show, maybe? Not sure here. Let's find out. Ah! Hey, I got both of them. Ah, oh, that's worked. Cool. So here. <laughs> so now my alien never dies. He just says, ouch. So I just put a create clone of my alien here and then show. And pretty much he does hide. He does everything that he's supposed to be doing. But he also just creates a clone right back of himself. But what I was trying to do is maybe like make it so that the clone starts at the starting position and then goes from there. So I bet I could do something like that from here. When ah, oh, you know what you would have to do? Okay, I got a way of doing this. So if you if you really wanted to do this, create the clones of yourself so the aliens just keep coming and coming and coming. Um, you could just say that like, if the laser gets hit, right, or if the laser hits the alien, broadcast, um, broadcast something, uh, monkey, if you want to, broadcast monkey, and then when monkey gets, then when brought, when I receive message monkey, clone myself, start back at the starting position and keep going. And you could add multiple and multiple, multiple of those. So, so maybe like, I don't know, you kill one alien, maybe two more pop up, and so forth and so on. So the game would get progressively harder. Or you could make it so, by the way, it's 8 o'clock. If you might want to leave, you can. Or you can make it so that if you hit the alien, the speeds increase or decrease or whatever. Or maybe the speeds go randomly. Uh, do whatever you need to do. All right? So you can dress this game up any which way you want to. Um, so... <laughs> Raise your hands if you've actually made a video game and it's working. Awesome, Manuel, Avery, Andrew, Zach, how y'all coming? I can stay a little bit over tonight. 
All right, Gabe, take care, sir. Yeah, I have homework to do as well. Finishing touches. <laughs> no, I was just kind of like spitballing of how to make the game different from what we have it to, to dress it up a little bit. I was just kind of spitballing ideas at the end there and then trying to show how I went about creating those ideas. So it took me, I didn't get it right the first time. It took me a few times before I actually achieved my goal. Awesome. Looks like everybody's getting it. So you might not got it yet. Not Avery. You're being quiet there. How you coming, sir? I'm just making the finishing touches. I'm trying. I'm trying to get all the aliens when they touch the spaceship for like the end screen to come up. Ah. Okay. Cool. Yep. I will see y'all Monday. I got my own homework to do, so I need you and all to get on off here. I will talk to y'all next Monday. I think. Yeah, I think next Monday. And we'll start the Arduinos. I'm looking forward to that, in case y'all can't tell. All right. Y'all have a good weekend.